Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, Papa Boris here, playing some more Retro Bowl. So we just finished our first game of the save file, which is really the last game of your first season. And now we're going to continue on to the Retro Bowl. I don't actually care about this, so we're going to go ahead and skip it. Buffalo won the Retro Bowl, woo, who cares? Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to the next season. Cool, cool, yep, nice. Uh, so in the draft, the way it works is you get to pick three players, a first round pick, a second round pick, and a third round pick, and as you can imagine, the player quality decreases as you go. This is a huge decision, because if you pick crappy stuff, like these are really amazing players, you can see they're all like really high star quality players. Um, if, you, if you pick stupidly here, or just in a way that doesn't really mesh with your play style, you're gonna be living with that decision for a long time because seasons are long, and it's gonna be a long time before you get the chance to just like add such good players to your team. So I'm not gonna go over every single position and you know what it means and what it does. We'll just talk about a few select things. So one thing I like to do in my first draft of a new save file, and which I recommend if you're having a tough time winning the game, is to try to get a good running back. And here we have a choice of two pretty good ones, which is good. I'm hoping one of them is what I want. The reason for that is that running backs, first of all, you can give the running back the ball every single play. I mean, you probably don't want to actually do that, but you have the option to do that. So it's a player you can definitely use a lot. And having a good one increases basically the free yards that you get just by clicking on the blue circle. In addition, running backs are basically also wide receivers. Because if you don't give them the ball and they manage to run through the middle, then a lot of the time the computer kind of ignores them and they're open and you can just throw them the ball. And if they have good catching like a wide receiver does, then they're just as good as a wide receiver, only they're technically a running back. Now at higher difficulties in this dynamic difficulty setting game, that kind of stops working. Higher difficulty, man, is just a bitch. But in the early levels, when you're just playing in your first season, running back is very valuable. So I'm gonna take a look at these two running backs. I'm hoping one of them is gonna be what I want. Second page, there's another one. He's only three stars, so he might not be as good. Now, let's talk a little bit about stats. So. Different positions have slightly different stats. Running backs have catching, strength, speed, and stamina. So catching is a rep representation of how good the person is at catching the ball. Obviously, to a lot of uh, an extent, it's a matter of like where you position the ball when you throw the ball with your quarterback. But there have definitely been times where I like, positioned it just fine and someone dropped it because they suck at catching. So it's important to have catching be good. Higher catching, although I don't know exactly how high, they will start leaping for the ball, like jumping up in the air to catch it or diving to catch it. So they can sometimes save you from bad throws. Strength is a measure of, uh, for a running back, how many stiff arms they can do. And it might also reflect the degree to which they can like block tackles or like, you know, be hit and not fall. Although I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. Speed's pretty self-explanatory. It's how fast they can run. And then stamina, like we talked about, is a measure of how far, how long they can run at their top speed. This is actually a very good player here because you want your running back to be fast and to be able to run fast for a long time and then the catching is good too because I do like to use my running backs as wide receivers. The strength, I don't know how much I should be concerned because of the poor documentation for this game so I don't know how big of a deal it is that this guy's actually capped a bit low on strength. Morale is also a little bit of a mystery though. Some people on Reddit think that morale means like how likely the person is to fumble or to be injured. However, I don't actually worry about morale on the first draft pick because if you can play the game reasonably well, you should be able to win pretty much all your games the first season or most of them. And as long as you're winning, your team morale will go up. So you can pick someone with bad morale and it'll kind of fix itself over the course of the season. Let's take a look at the other running back. So this running back is interesting because he can also run fast for a long time. He has the same potential speed and stamina. It's just that, um, his values for that start off lower than the other guys. However, he's art and he's also has the same catching. He just starts there and his strength is higher. So overall, I like this guy better. He has a higher potential. It's important to know that star rating isn't everything because in some cases, the way the stats are distributed makes it so that a high star player is not as good as a lower star player if the way they're getting their stars is through not as useful stats. But for running backs, every single stat's important. You want them to be able to catch the ball, you want them to be able to do stiff arms and shrug off tackles, and you want them to be able to run fast for a long time. I'm actually going to sign this one even though his morale is worse because I'm going to judge that the morale is not a big deal. So that's my strategy. My number one thing in the first draft pick of every new save file is to get a good running back, and luckily we got one here, so let's go ahead and grab this guy. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at our existing running back. 
So I can keep him. He's not expensive or anything. He obviously just, as you can tell, sucks. So he's basically just a backup in case any, in case my current running back gets injured. I'm gonna click on the trade button to see if I can get something good for him. Round two pick, yeah, I'm just gonna take a round two pick. Round two is pretty good and it might help me beef up my team a little bit more than just having a backup running back in case the first one gets injured. Okay, so now let's go back and we're doing drafting round two. We're gonna get two picks here, one just because we get one and then one because we traded away our old running back. So besides running backs, one thing I like to get is a good wide receiver. Uh, it's good to have one good wide receiver because you want someone who's fast, who can catch the ball well, and then can score a touchdown if you throw the ball right and they're open in the right position at the right time. It's, it gives you some free points sometimes. Now, you can get two wide receivers. The problem is, I'm just gonna be honest, I suck at the game. So there's the one wide receiver at the top of the screen, one wide receiver at the bottom of the screen, and I just have a really hard time thinking about both of them. I pretty much always, I guess it's like a psychological thing or a physiological thing, I'm always looking at the top one and the bottom one's hard for me to manage. So I really just want one wide receiver. I don't care too much about having two. This guy's got a lot of stars. Now stars aren't everything, but let's see what he has to show for himself. Wow, that's amazing. So wide receivers have the same stats as running back, catching, strength, speed, and stamina. But they don't care as much about strength because if you hit him with the ball while he's open, He's not gonna need that strength. A lot of times, you know, if you catch the ball and then there's someone else right there, you know, strength might be useful so you can do a stiff arm and block it. But what you really want is for them to be able to catch well. So if you throw not super precisely, they can still leap and make the catch. You obviously want them to be fast and to run at their top speed for a long time. So this is amazing. I'm definitely gonna catch him. This is basically, I mean, it says he's a round two pick, but this guy is basically a, a round one pick. He has a very high star rating and the potential rating is very high. I just gotta make sure I give him the ball so he, he levels up faster. Okay, so now do I keep this guy? If I can get a round two pick, it'd be tempting to trade him off because I mean, his stats suck and it's gonna take a lot of effort to get him to be where he needs to be. Ah, I can get a round three pick for him. Okay, we'll hang on to him. I'm not going to take a round three pick because at round three things get kind of crappy. I guess we'll just hang on to these two. I really hope though that um, this is the guy at the top of the screen if he's at the bottom of the screen, I'm actually gonna just bench this one. If you have one wide receiver, they end up always being at the top. Okay, so now we have another round two pick. So what can you do? Well, I like tight ends. Tight ends are the guys kind of like, on the, on the offensive line, they sometimes just block and they sometimes run forward and catch a ball. Um, so I like having one who's decent in that position so you can get up to an open spot faster and maybe get some extra yards if you throw the ball to him. So this guy's got three stars, Let's see what he's got to say for himself. Okay, so he's just kind of like an all around kind of middle of the road guy. He needs a lot of help on the stamina department. Tight ends aren't less likely to just like break free out into the open, so the stamina is not as big of a deal. Um, yeah, I'm kind of tempted by that guy. Another thing that you can try to do is you can take offensive linemen. They don't actually do anything except give your quarterback more time to be able to throw the ball. I haven't had too many issues having that time, so I'm not gonna prioritize them that much. So like, you know, it's cool to have someone who's like really strong and good at tackling in your offensive line, but uh, I'm not gonna prioritize it. You can take defensive players. Here we actually kind of have a shortage of defensive players. They're all on this page. Um, basically, I don't really know all that well what defensive players do, but if you have defensive players on your team every once in a while, it'll be like, Teamer makes a great sack. And he like, you know, prevents the enemy from going forward. My trouble with defensive players is, in one of my save files, I actually prioritized drafting really good defensive players. And what would happen is, like, it didn't actually make any difference. It would just keep saying over and over and over, so-and-so was too slow, so-and-so missed the tackle, so-and-so wasn't strong enough. And I was like, well, great, I'm glad I spent my draft pick doing that. So you can do this to maybe beef up your defense a little bit if there's something you care about on the offensive side of things. But my personal preference is just to try to improve my offense. Now you can take a quarterback, of course, because quarterbacks, you know, throw accuracy increases how much of the arc you see. Strength is useful because you can throw the ball faster and maybe reduce the odds of interception. Speed for me is irrelevant and stamina is irrelevant because I'm never ever gonna run with the quarterback. So for me, quarterbacks aren't as big of a deal because I care about only two of their stats. And it just so happens the quarterback that we began with is totally fine, he's very accurate. Arm strength could be higher, but it's not a priority for me to fix this. So what we're gonna do is go back to this and I'm gonna pick up a tight end here. Just an all around decent guy. It's gonna be better than having a generic computer in that spot. 
Let's take a quick look at our kicker. So this kicker actually really sucks. So kick accuracy is uh, a measure of how slowly the stuff fills up, making, making the mini game to click at the right time easier. Kick range is a measure of how far he can kick. Now, I don't know what the hell speed does. And as for stamina, what it says in the game is that it determines how much the strength depletes every throw or kick. He doesn't kick all that often, so I don't know if that's that big of a deal. This guy's actually really horrible. I bet he's only around three pick if I if I click the trade button. Yeah, okay. So I could get a better kicker, perhaps. Let's see what Ballard has to say for himself. So this guy has a lot of potential. Um, he can be moderately accurate. The range is probably the most important stat simply because it's a mechanical limitation on how, f how, like how far away you can be and still make field goals. Accuracy you can compensate for a little bit by just being, you know, good at mini games. Let me see if there's anything else here that we can get for kicker. Oh, this is bad. So, capped range and not very great accuracy. Gates, so he can get up to a modest accuracy. Yeah, I don't think I really care about that too much. Okay, um. What I might do, let me take a look at my roster. So I have a DL. There's three defensive things. There's a DL, there's DBs, and there are LBs. And you can tell I have nothing, I don't know nothing about football. So this guy has a lot of potential. Now, one problem is I find it very difficult to um, level these guys up. I've definitely tried it where I got one with a huge potential and then he just like sucked and sucked and sucked for years. So with this, basically, it seems like the game sometimes checks their tackling, sometimes checks their strength, and sometimes checks their speed. So you want one of them to be really high for that to ever, you know, actually matter. So with this guy, and I, don't, I have no idea what stamina does for them either. So with this guy, I want to cap his speed, and then whenever speed gets checked, he'd actually have a decent chance of, you know, blocking something. And then I'd work on his tackling. I guess we'll do this. I... You'll probably see that over the course of this campaign, this guy is not really going to level up that much. I don't know how to make it so that you level up your defensive people better. Okay, I'm not going to trade away any of my guys because I don't actually want any more round three picks. What I am going to do is take a look, make sure everything is what I want. Yeah, I don't want to trade this guy away. Okay, so let's go back to the front office, take a quick look at this. You have these coordinators. You always start with crappy ones. These guys can actually level up, and then each time they level up, their star rating gets half a star better. This just like determines the basic, like the baseline quality of your offense or defense before you consider the stars of any of the players. And I think that's kind of the thing is like you need your defensive coordinator in particular to, to be really really good in order for your defense to actually be able to stop things it's not just a matter of those players being good you need to actually have an overall good defense to be able to frequently stop the computer when you're not controlling the game and the computer is doing the controlling of the game for the defense for you so our rehab facilities got worse we're in pretty bad shape with that i'm still going to focus purely on stadium and training and then we're going to get rehab facilities after that um how long did i talk for just now 13 minutes ah, okay fine whatever let's go ahead and play a game See if we can win one. So playing against Miami, who's not a very good team, it seems. This is, this is actually a team you often start with. So their offense kind of sucks. My defense sucks, but so does theirs. Hopefully, if we can just avoid throwing interceptions and get a point on every play or every possession, we'll be fine. So we can change the play now. Oh, that's kind of nifty. Uh, a certain number of times per half. It looks like three for this, although I've seen it be different numbers. You can change to a different play if you don't like the patterns or people are running. Oh god, I forgot who my good wide receiver is. Shoot. Um, okay, I need to check if it's CB or DC after this game, because if it's DC who's my good one, I need to bench CB so that DC goes to the top position. One thing that's kind of annoying is your first tight end is always this guy, but I really wish it was this guy, because this is the guy I like to often throw to. So, you kind of need, at least I kind of need with my playstyle, two tight ends to do what I want to do. Okay, so we ended up throwing to our running back there. That's what I'll be doing a fair chunk of the time in this playthrough. Oh, let's throw it to our new tight end. He gets sacked promptly. That's fine. He got five yards. He did his job. Okay, let's see if we can... Oh, that there's the... See, there's the generic computer tight end. He's just huffing and puffing. <laughs> Trying to blow the house down with his slow-ass ass. So, yeah, like, I wish that that guy had been this guy. And this guy's just going to stand there and block like an idiot. So yeah, see there. Yeah, I noticed that at higher difficulty levels, these like this like open tight end is not open as much of the time. But 
a lot of times in the lower difficulty, you get a bunch of free yards. So maybe what I should have done is I should have maybe drafted like in, in round three, like a crappy tight end. Oops, I think I might have been able to make some more yards there without diving. Uh, I should have maybe just drafted a crappy tight end and tried to engineer it so that um, my good one was the top one. That's actually something I've never tried before, but I should probably try that at some point. Okay, that's my wide receiver, and I dodge and get a touchdown. Yes, I will try that. I will try to find in the next draft, which, you know, is like 17 games from now because seasons are kind of long. Um, but yes, I will try to use my round three pick. The thing I don't know is if you can control who goes where. Like, can I make these two guys switch places? Is there a way? Or is it always going to put, like, the better one on the bottom and the worst one on top? I don't actually know. Uh oh, I don't think that wide receiver's open. I was about to get sacked. There's my running back. See, see how useful that is? To have a running back that's really good because he just sprinted on up there and then acted as a wide receiver helping me make that play. Stiff arm? Nope. Okay, he just managed to kind of block that tackle without the stiff arm text. Now, the clock is going down. You always have to judge, like, should I use a timeout? Because you don't want to run at a time before you can score. But if you use a timeout and then you end up scoring and then the computer has more time because you used a timeout, then that's no good either. I think that wide receiver is going to be open. Yep. So I probably shouldn't have used a timeout because now my opponent just has a little bit of extra time to get another point or another touchdown before the half ends and everything resets. I don't think they're going to do it. I Even with a Hail Mary, they pro they probably wouldn't have succeeded because they probably don't have a good enough stamina on their runners. Okay, so I began the game with the ball, which means at the beginning of the second half, they get the ball. They only got a field goal that time, though. So I am five points ahead, so I should be able to lock this game up if I can get a touchdown. Ooh, hang on, that guy's wide open. I think this is my good guy. Ah, crap. So my good guy's at the bottom, which, by the way, there's nothing wrong with having a good wide receiver at the bottom. It's just I suck at this game, and I have a hard time dealing with the bottom guy. Like, if I put all my focus on the bottom guy, I can throw it to him, but you don't want to put all your focus on any one person. Ooh, that might be a miss. Yep. Uh, it was within the range, it was within the cone, but what I noticed is that, like, the direction that it's going matters. So, like, if it's moving up, and it's at the bottom of the cone, because it was moving up, it'll be fine. But if it's traveling up, and you click at the top of the cone, it'll actually fail. Well, luckily, I'm three points ahead, and I have the ball. So as long as I don't throw an interception here, I'll be totally fine. Stiff arm? Nope, no stiff arm. I got four free yards. It's fine. Not going to bother stopping the clock, because... I don't need to. Now the smart thing to do would be to try to like throw to my wide receiver to level him up some. I am becoming increasingly oh my my running back <laughs> he he did a kill steal he stole the pass from my wide receiver. Um, so the game's letting you do a field goal because there's not much time left. I will do a field goal here. I think my kicker can do this. Oh no, he can't. Oh, he can. He can. Okay, phew. Um. Because that just gives my, my kicker a little bit of a level up. So I got two coaching credits. My fans improved a little bit. And because I'm in the middle bar, I got two credits for it. And now if you... now Oh yeah, I didn't talk about this. But at the end of the game, you can um, you get a choice. Even though I won, this is a bad choice. Sometimes you get a good choice even though you lose. I'm guessing that winning gives you a higher chance of a good choice. So you can either criticize the team in this particular case and lower the overall morale, or you can criticize the player and just lower his morale. I'm just gonna lower him because his morale is kinda high, so I can take a morale hit there. So look at the XP, right? My quarterback and running back got a good amount of XP. My wide receiver got some XP. But like my tight end, I barely threw the ball to him, he barely got any XP. And then my defensive people barely got any XP either. So like, that's the thing, you know? You don't get as much XP, you don't get the same amount of XP on every single player. Okay, so front office, um, I could improve rehab. I'm going to take a gamble that I'm. this isn't going to matter. Obviously, if like my running back gets injured and is out for seven games, I'm going to be really regretful I didn't upgrade these, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. And we're going to pause here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.